everyone. Welcome to Studio Classroom on the Air. This is the place to come when you want to have some fun. My name is Rebecca. Thank you for joining us today. Can you imagine yourself making a difference in this world? Do you truly believe that you can make a positive change? Well, I believe that each one of you can make a difference. Today, we are going to learn about an individual who made an incredible impact. Well, today's lesson is called Charles Mooley, Father to the Fatherless. And as we go through today's lesson, I would like you to try to answer this question. What happened to Charles Mooley at the age of six? What happened to Charles Mooley at the age of six? Friends, open up your magazines to today's lesson and let's begin. Follow me. Charles Mooley, Father to the Fatherless. Discover how one man is changing the world one child at a time. Imagine waking up at the age of six and discovering your family is missing. That's what happened to young Charles Mooley in his Kenyan hut one morning. He soon realized he had been abandoned by his very poor parents and seven siblings. The child was forced to become a street beggar in order to survive. Yet even in the midst of his poverty and despair, he still dreamed of being an important man someday. Hi everyone, welcome to Language Lab. 这篇文章的第一个重点，我们看 sibling 这个名词。Sibling 是指兄弟姐妹或者是手足。例如 ，All of Vincent's siblings are doctors except him. Vincent 所有的兄弟姐妹都是医生，除了他自己之外。或者是 ，Francis has four siblings, two older brothers and two younger sisters. Francis 有四个兄弟姐妹，两个哥哥跟两个妹妹。若是手足之间的手足之争，叫做 sibling rivalry. R I V A L R Y. 例如 ，the sibling rivalry between Stella and her younger sister really troubles their parents. Stella 和妹妹之间的手足之争让父母亲真的很伤脑筋。继续，我们看 despair 这个不可数名词。第一，这个字首有去除的意思。S P A I R 这个字根有希望的意思，所以 despair 就是指绝望。例如 ，Tom sank into despair after he was divorced. Tom 离婚之后就陷入了绝望。或者是 a feeling of despair overshadowed the family after their father got cancer. 在他们的父亲罹患癌症之后，绝望之情让整个家族蒙上了阴影。或者是 Irene was in despair over her failing health. Irene 对于自己日益衰落的身体已经不抱任何希望了。Hey, you know something, Gabe?、Mm-hmm. After reading this lesson, this actually really made me appreciate the fact that I grew up with a father. Uh, yeah, actually, me too, Rebecca. Would you care to elaborate on that? Well, right, because Charles Mooley, father to the fatherless, you know, this individual, he woke up one day,、mm-hmm. and his parents and his siblings. Totally abandoned him.、Mm-hmm. He was six years old, so he didn't actually grow up with a father, and and so now he's trying to be a father to all those children out there who don't have a father. That's exactly right. Six years old is a really early age for your family to abandon you. Actually, any age, that's a pretty terrible thing to happen. So we're learning about this man named named Charles Mooley, who is father to the fatherless. What does that mean there?、Hmm. Well, the fatherless.、Mm-hmm. This just refers to somebody who doesn't have a father. Right. That's pretty simple, right?、Mm-hmm. So you can say that he is father to the fatherless. You could also say he is father to fatherless children, right? Or the fatherless population. Sometimes we just use one word to express this idea that includes a lot of people. So the fatherless. That means. Fatherless children. Exactly. Now there is another word that we would like to teach you, and that is the word the homeless. Ah. The homeless.、Mm-hmm. That just refers to people who don't have a home. They usually walk around the streets because they don't have a place to go, and oftentimes they hold up signs asking people to give them money or even food. 
That's right. And so you could, of course, say, oh, this is a homeless person, mm -hmm. or I want to go and help、uh, some of the homeless people in our neighborhood. Or you could say, someone has a heart for the homeless. That means they have a heart for people who don't have homes. That's right. But of course, in today's lesson, we are talking more about the fatherless, people who don't have a father. So discover how one man is changing the world. One child at a time. Imagine waking up at the age of six and discover your family is missing. You know something, Gabe? I really don't want to imagine that. Yeah, I don't、no. want to imagine that for myself or for anybody else. So what happened here? That's what happened to young Charles Muli in his Kenyan hut one morning. So he lived in Kenya, and there are many different kinds of houses, right?、Um, this is a kind of hut. That's right. And so、um, Molly might have lived in something similar to this hut.、Mm -hmm. Well, he soon realized he had been abandoned by his very poor parents and seven siblings, his seven brothers and sisters. I don't know how they forgot Molly. But they did. Yeah, maybe, maybe they just knew they couldn't take care of all the children, and they had to make the difficult decision of leaving him behind. I think it, I think it was a terrible decision. But we're going to learn about what Charles Muli learned through this. And you see that word "sibling" there. Michelle did talk about that and that phrase "sibling rivalry." I really like that phrase. Rebecca, did you ever have any sibling rivalry when you were growing up? Hey, I'm one of six kids.、Mm -hmm. We definitely had. Sibling rivalry at times, but let me tell you something.、Mm -hmm. I love all my siblings, and I would never want to give any of them up. Yeah, kept life interesting. Me too. Well, well friends, yeah. How should we continue? Let's continue. The child was forced to become a street beggar in order to survive. Now, if you're forced to do something, that means that you're required to do something that you don't necessarily. Want to do right, and so you could say that these circumstances forced Charles Muli to survive. Okay, he, it forced him to do something in order to survive. Well, he had to become a street beggar in order to survive. Now,、uh, different cities around the world, you might see beggars or you might see homeless people, right? And of course, there are other cities in the world. Where maybe you don't see as many. Maybe it's because of the way that the politics are, or the government runs things. But maybe you've seen someone like this begging on the side of the road. And it makes me so sad to see street beggars or see children sitting in the streets like that,、mm -hmm. or just knowing that there are children around the world who need to beg in order to survive. And that is what Charles Muli was forced to do. Well, we continue. Yet, even in the midst of his poverty and despair, he still dreamed of being an important man someday. Let's talk about that phrase "in the midst of." This just means that you're in the middle of an event or a situation. That's right. So you could say, "Yet, even in the middle of his poverty and despair, he still dreamed of being an important man one day." Well, let's take a look at this other phrase here: "in despair," or just the word "despair." It's from the word bank. It is a verb.、Uh, what does this mean? If you are in despair, that just means that you have this feeling of hopelessness. There's no hope, and you feel like you can't do anything about it. That's right. So this phrase "in despair," well, this word becomes a noun if you're、mm -hmm. in despair, right? Jue Wang. You know that movie Anne of Green Gables.、Mm -hmm. Someone says to despair is to turn your back on God because it means that you don't have hope anymore, and that's a choice that I think we can make sometimes. Friends, we do have more to learn, but right now it is time for us to join the Info, Info Cloud. Cloud. Hello, friends. Welcome to Info Cloud. Today we have an uplifting phrase to discuss: from rags to riches. This phrase is uplifting because it is used to describe someone going from a poor and difficult life to a rich and comfortable life. If you read the life story of Charles Muli, you can find out how he went from rags to riches. That's right. His story is certainly a rags to riches tale. Can you just use the phrase as a modifier to the noun tale? So 
This phrase can be used in two ways: Charles went from rags to riches, or this is a rags to riches story. Okay, why don't we break this phrase down a little, Carolyn? What does it really mean? To put it simply, it means to go from being poor to being wealthy. Right. The word rags is used to represent the old clothing a poor person might wear because they can't buy new clothes. And riches? Well, I think that one is obvious. It represents large amounts of money and wealth. Going from rags to riches isn't easy, but many people hope to do this. 我们先来看 rags to riches 这个片语 Rags 是破旧的衣服 The beggar was dressed in rags. 一个衣衫褴褛的乞丐。注意，这里要用复数 rags 加 s. Riches 是财富，因此 rags to riches 就是从褴褛到致富。这句话常常用来形容麻雀变凤凰或白手起家的人。She went from rags to riches. 这个片语呢，也可以当形容词用，例如《灰姑娘的故事》。是一个 rags to riches tale, 麻雀变凤凰的故事。Hey everyone, welcome back to Studio Classroom. I want you to imagine with me for just a moment that you woke up one morning, and then your parents and all of your siblings abandoned you. Doesn't that sound like a terrible situation? Perhaps even impossible. Well, unfortunately. For Charles Muley, this was reality. It actually really happened. That's probably why he wanted to be a father to the fatherless. He grew up with no father. Well, friends, we have more to learn about this very inspiring man. So let's continue. Charles Muley, father to the fatherless. When Muley turned sixteen, he walked for three days. To Kenya's capital, Nairobi, in search of work. In the years that followed, he labored at many difficult jobs. Muli saved his money and bought a car, which he began using as a taxi in 1971. In time, he started a transportation service with a fleet of vehicles. The company, called Muli Ways, became quite successful. Muli then went on to become the owner of a prosperous oil company. All of his hard work turned Muli into a millionaire and an important man. Yet his life would soon take another dramatic turn. Okay, 接下来我们看 labor 这个动词 Labor 是指努力工作或者是辛苦的干活。例如 Matthew labored in an automotive factory for ten years. Matthew 在一家汽车工厂辛勤工作了十年，或者是 The author labored five years on her novel before it became a bestseller. 这本小说成为畅销书之前，作者足足花了五年功夫才把它写出来。Labor 也可以当名词，意思是指劳动或工作。例如 ，The farmer's harvest is the fruit of his labor for the whole year. 这位农夫的丰收是一整年他辛勤工作的成果。最后，我们看的是。Prosperous 这个形容词 ，P R O 这个字首有往前的意思 ，S P E R 这个字根是指希望，所以 prosperous 是指成功的或者是兴盛的。例如 ，The town used to be prosperous because of gold mining。这个城镇曾经因为采金矿而繁荣过。或者是 ，Patrick is a prosperous merchant and an environmental activist。Patrick 是位成功的商人，也是一位环保主义的积极分子。它的名词是 prosperity, p r o s p e r i t y. 例如 ，the country had a long period of prosperity after its civil war. 这个国家在内战结束之后享有长期的繁荣。And now let's get back to our teachers. Well, we learned something interesting about Molly. We learned when he was 16. When Molly turned 16, he walked for three days. To Kenya's capital, Nairobi, in search of work. Have you ever wondered what Nairobi might look like? You know, I've never been to Kenya. I've never been to Nairobi. I imagine it looks something like this. Well, yep, you are absolutely right. <laughs> it actually looks like 
a really nice place. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, Molly walked to Nairobi for three days in search of work. Let's talk about that phrase "in search of something." <laughs> This just means that you are looking for something. That's right. So usually that word "search." Uh, well, I often use it as a verb. I'm searching for something, right? Here it's a noun, in search of something, but it means you're looking for something. So maybe you are single and you're in search of a relationship, or you know, like a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or perhaps you need to go and buy something. Maybe you are in search of a store that sells that thing. Well, let's continue on with our lesson. In the years that followed, he labored at many difficult jobs. Now let's take a look at that word to labor. Of course, it's one of our word bank words. And if you labor at something, that just means that you work really, really, really hard to do something. Yeah. So you could use this word as a synonym for to work, right? But like Rebecca said, it usually has that meaning of working really hard. That's how I usually use this word labor. Otherwise, I would just use the word work. You could say that in the years that followed, he worked at many difficult jobs. That's correct. Well, co continuing on, Molly saved his money and bought a car, which he began using as a taxi in 1971—a very creative way of making money. In time, he started a transportation service with a fleet of vehicles. Now, let's go back and talk about that phrase "in time." Now, this just means, or we just use this when you're. Basically, saying that a period of time has passed. That's right. So over some time, he started a transportation service with a fleet of vehicles. Now, I usually see this word "fleet" when I'm thinking about um, when I'm thinking about uh, boats、mm. or in the ocean,、mm. or or what's that phrase when you see like a lot of boats? <laughs> a fleet of ships. Ah, yes. That's what you're thinking of, right?、Mm -hmm. So, of course, in our lesson, we have a fleet of vehicles, but. You could also say a fleet of ships, and this often reminds me of the military, like the navy. Yes,、mm -hmm. exactly right. Because the military、uh, government might send out a fleet of ships to go to war, right? So let's go back to our lesson. We're learning about a fleet of vehicles here. He started a transportation service with a fleet of vehicles, so you get the idea. He has more than just one vehicle. And usually that means that there's a large number. So a large number of vehicles, a fleet of vehicles, a fleet of ships, a large number of ships. The company called Mollyways became quite successful. Molly then went on to become the owner of a prosperous oil company. And you see that word prosperous. It's a great word for you to know. If you're prosperous, that just means that you are. Successful at what you are doing. That's right. His company became very successful, and you heard Michelle mention that related word prosperity, right? This word prosperous is an adjective, and if you have prosperity, that is a noun. That means you have become successful, right? Well, we continue here. All of his hard work turned Molly into a millionaire and an important man. So he started out as an abandoned child at the age of six. He walked three days to Nairobi. Now, at the end of our lesson, he's already a millionaire. But we read something else. Yet his life would soon take another dramatic turn, and there our lesson ends. I wonder what's going to happen. Well, right now it's time for a challenge. It's time for the SC, SC challenge. challenge. Hey, everyone! It's SC challenge time, and look who is joining me today, Linda. Hello, Hi, Linda. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. And of course, I know you're very excited about today. I am. Okay. Do you know what questions I'm going to ask you? No. Great. That's the way we like it. Well, today's lesson is Charles Mully, father to the fatherless. Do you know much about Charles Mully? Well, I know that he gave up a lot, and he has helped over twelve thousand children so far. Incredible. Okay. Well, I have three questions from today's lesson. See if you can answer these questions as I ask Linda. Question number one: What happened to Charles at the age of six? A. He was abandoned by his father or his family. B. He found a dog on the streets. C. He started working for his mom. Or D. His brother and sister died. 
It's A. The answer is A. He was abandoned by his family at isn't the age that, of six. Isn't that interesting? He was abandoned by his mother, father, and his seven siblings. Right. He just woke up one day and everybody was gone but him. I cannot believe that. <laughs> well, anyway, question number two. What did Charles become at the age of six? A, an actor. B, a street beggar. C, a dog trainer. Or D, a student. B, he became a street beggar. Are you sure? I'm positive. Well, guess what? You are absolutely right. Yay Charles, me. <laughs> yes, yay you. <laughs> he became a street be beggar at the age of six. Next question. Last question. What kind of company did Charles own later in his life, of course? A, a gas company. B, a bread company. C, an oil company. Or D, a card company. It, the answer is C, he owned an oil company. Is that your final answer? It is my final answer. Well, that is correct. Charles owned an oil company. Friends, I'm sure you were able to guess those questions as well. Well, Linda, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Hey, Rebecca, would you like to learn the Mooley dance? Uh, what's the Mooley dance? Mooley, Mooley. Mooley, Mooley. I have to do that? Yeah, come on. Mooley, Mooley. Mooley, Mooley. Mooley, Mooley. Yeah, this is great because Mooley has become a very prosperous man. It makes me want to dance. And it's like that song, Bole Bole. So, uh, I see. Yeah. So we might become very prosperous dancers. Uh, Got it. Maybe. Well, friends, thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to come back tomorrow as we continue learning about Charles Mooley. Right here on Studio, Studio Classroom. Classroom.